Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can finally stop wasting time and your limited AI credits trying to get the right response from AI. The platform that I'm talking about specifically is called Pretty Prompt. It's a really powerful AI prompt enhancer that basically allows you to instantly refine your prompts with one click, get the accurate quality output you actually want on the first try, and save your best prompts right inside ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini. Now I've teamed up with AppSumo to offer a license tier one of Pretty Prompt to one lucky winner. Now to enter this giveaway, all you need to do is click the link in my description, then put your first name and your email. Now hurry because this giveaway will end on Monday, November the 10th. Now I'm so glad we have a more affordable deal on AppSumo. So a pretty prompt starts at just $29 for license tier one, and it goes up to 400 bucks for license tier four. And I think for most of us, license tier one would be plenty sufficient because you can improve up to 200 prompts per month. And honestly, I think that's quite a bit. And at least for me, I know I probably won't come close to reaching that limit. Now regarding limits, so you are limited to the one-click improve prompt feature, but there's also another feature called refine prompt. And I don't think that does pull from your limits. So there is a difference between improving prompts and refining prompts. And I'll show you the differences between these two in a few seconds. So Pretty Prompt is a Chrome extension. It's nice that it is featured and it has an almost five star uh, rating. So this does give me some confidence uh, in this tool. So having this Chrome extension will allow you to use uh, Pretty Prompt on ChatGPT, uh, Gemini, and also Claude. Now, aside from using Pretty Prompt on those LLMs, you could also use it with the Pretty Prompt app. So here were the two options I was telling you about. So you can improve a prompt or you can refine a prompt. So you could see on the top right hand corner, I have 199 prompts. Uh, remaining. But if you go to refine prompt, the credits are gone. So it doesn't take any credits to have you refine a prompt, which is really nice. And then as you are working on your prompts, um, pretty prompt will actually save everything in your history section. So you could view the original prompt and then the improved prompt. Okay, so this is the first one and then this is the second one. Now for this, I did use the improve prompt option. And for this one, I used the refined prompt option. Now, one thing I wish they changed to improve the overall UI is to change the name of this tab because this isn't necessarily the improved prompt. This is actually the refined prompt. So that's one thing they could improve upon here. So one thing I do before I send um, email campaigns to my subscribers is, so basically I write my email. Now, a lot of my emails are letting my subscribers know that I published a YouTube video. So this is my draft email, um, letting people know that I published a video reviewing a pretty prompt. So what I do before I send it is actually use this exact prompt here. It says, rephrase this email campaign to improve grammar and readability. Now this first sentence, I actually use this prompt here for almost everything that I write online because ChatGPT usually does a pretty good um, job in improving the grammar and readability with anything I write. But for all email campaigns, I also add, do not use jargon, bold key phrases and emphasize key points and to make it easier for people to skim. So if you've received any of my email campaigns before, you will notice that there are a lot of keywords and phrases that are bolded and that's because of this prompt. So what I did earlier today was have Pretty Prompt improve my original prompt here, okay? So let me go back to history and you could see this is uh, my original prompt and this is the improved prompt, okay? So it's clearly a lot more detailed and there's different sections in this prompt. So you could see this first sentence says, expert role definition. And this second part is the main objective. And then it goes more into detail into the specific revi revision constraints and parameters and the key user input placeholder. Now, I really like this detailed part because it's split it into three main objectives. So grammar and clarity, jargon restriction, 
and emphasis and skimmability. So improving this prompt did take one credit. Now let's go to the refine prompt, okay? So this is the refined prompt right here. So it's definitely much more different. Okay, now let's put this in action so you know exactly how it works. So I have this other prompt right here. So it says generate a three day email series teaching people how to craft high performing prompts for chat GPT. So under improve prompt, I'm just going to paste it right there, then click on improve prompt. Okay, and here we go. So uh, these are the elements of what has been improved. So defined a clear expert persona, explicitly stated the main objective, so on and so forth. And here we go. So it says you are an expert prompt engineer and email marketing strategist with extensive experience in creating engaging high con high conversion educational content for AI tools. So that's the expert role definition. Then it goes to the main task and objective, which is to design a complete three-day email marketing series. And then after that, it goes into the context and constraints, okay? So the series must be structured sequentially over three distinct days. And then it goes more into the detail, so content parameters and structure guidance. So day one is focus, so introduction to prompt engineering. And then day two, the focus is advanced techniques. And then the day three focus is troubleshooting and optimization. And then the last part is the very important key user input. Now let's go to refine prompt. Now this is much different, okay? So when I paste the original prompt here, you could see this form pop up. So it asks us three important questions, okay? So the first one is, who is the target audience for this email series? Knowing their current level of understanding and goals will help tailor the content. So these options here are specific to your prompt. So we have a list of audiences here. So beginners, intermediate, advanced business professionals, uh, students and educators. So let's just say we want to focus on business professionals. So mainly you guys watching this uh, video. And then the second question is, what specific outcomes or skills should the recipients gain after completing this email series? Let's see, so I want my audience to discover advanced prompt engineering strategies like few shot learning and chain of thought. Personally, I don't know what those mean, so I wanna learn what those mean. So I'm gonna select this one. And then for the last question, what is the desired tone and style for the email series? I would say action oriented and practical. Now we need to click on submit answers. And now um, Pretty Prompt will refine this original prompt here. So as you could see, very uh, detailed, right? So the objective is to generate a three-day email series focused on advanced chat GPT prompt engineering for business professionals. This is my target audience, the desired outcomes I want them to have, the tone and style, and this is the content structure. So these are all the details listed out for each of the three days. And this is the deliverable section. So this is what the AI should generate. So a sequence of three distinct emails, each designed to be sent on consecutive days. Each email should include so on and so forth. Now, actually, let's test this out. Okay, so first, I'm going to test out the original prompt. I'm going to go into my chat GPT. Now, while we are here, I want to point out pretty prompt right here. So you see this icon here? This does come from the Chrome extension. So everything that we did in the app, you could do right inside ChatGPT. And there's even more features as well. So aside from just improving the prompt, so you can put your prompt here and then click on improve prompt. If you click on this drop down, you could view your prompt history and all the prompts that you've improved, you could save to the prompt library. Now, if this gets a little annoying, you can hide pretty prompt for 30 minutes, or you could turn this into a floating button. So this is the, um, actually it just went away. So I guess if you click, it kind of jumps to wherever your cursor is. Personally, I think that is kind of annoying. So I'm going to just have it pin right over here. Okay. So let's see what ChatGPT generates with the original um, prompt that I came up with. Okay, here we go. So this is day one, the secret behind powerful prompts. It gave us the subject, the preview text, uh, the body here. So overall, I think it's um, not too bad. It does give um, tasks 
uh, for each day. But let's try the improved prompts, okay? So I'm gonna click this drop down and go to prompt history. And this is my history, okay? So let's go back here, go to improved prompt. So we can apply, we can save to our library, or we can just copy this text. Let's click on apply, and it's added into this chat box. No, actually, before I hit send, I want to let ChatGPT know that we're starting a new project. Okay, so I'm gonna paste the improved prompt here now that we restarted and have a fresh chat. So I'm gonna, Hit enter and let's see um, what is different. Okay, so here we go. So now I'm immediately seeing some improvements. So we do have three subject line options. I'm not seeing the preview text that it generated with my original prompt. So that's one thing to note. Now let's take a look at the email body. So as you can see, much more detailed, right? So we have uh, clarity, specificity, context, setting, today's action step. This is uh, day two and this is the last day. So overall, I would say much more uh, detailed. Now let's try the refined prompt. So I'm going to go to my prompt history and go here. And this is the refined prompt. Okay. Now I'm going to apply it, hit enter, and let's see what we get. Okay. Here we go. So right off the bat, I'm skimming through the body text and it's actually much more detailed than the second one. I actually think I like this best because if you think about it, we actually gave pretty prompt more information, more context to have it refine the prompt. So I think that's why I like it because I specifically mentioned the audience, so on and so forth, right? So it says, here's your complete three-day email series designed for business professionals looking to level up, right? The version is clear, actionable, and business focused. And that's exactly what I really want, okay? So I think that's why I do like this one more. So we have a list of subject line options. Uh, this is the body here. There's like three steps and some actionable exercises. This is uh, day two, and this is the last day. Now, earlier today, I was testing out, you know, the original prompt that I shared with you guys on Gemini and also Claude. So let me show those responses to you right now. Okay, so this is uh, my Gemini. I'm using um, the free version of Gemini, but I do have some access to 2.5 Pro. So let me open up uh, the canvas here. So this is the email that it generated using my original uh, prompt, okay? So if you remember, it's rephrased this email campaign to improve grammar and readability. Do not use jargon, bold key phrases to emphasize the key points and to make it easier for people to skim. So from this prompt, this is what Gemini created for us. And then I tried it again, and this is the improved prompt. And I actually do like this much more. So subject, it says new video, write better prompts, lifetime deal inside. So for the original subject, it's new video, improve your prompts, and a lifetime deal. So I definitely like this second subject line, including the body, copy of the email as well. And then this is the third one. Now this one is good, but I feel like the words that it uses are a little too advanced. When I write my email campaigns, I like to use more simple words. So for example, the subject, it says a tool for iterative prompt refinement. I personally think these words are a little bit too advanced. So depending on your audience, this might be a better option. But for me, I like to keep my words um, pretty simple. It also says, you know, in the video, I explore how it helps you systematically improve and refine any prompts. So that is a little bit more advanced. It says, learn to iteratively polish your requests for better results. So again, the audience that this is speaking to is a more advanced audience. And that's because I did tell Pretty Prompt who my audience uh, was. And then this is Claude using that same prompt to improve my email campaign, right? So this is the first email without any changes to my original prompt. This is the second email after Pretty Prompt improved it. And then this is uh, the third one, okay? So as you can see, the third one is much more, I think, better formatted, right? They included bullet points and clearly much more detailed. Now, aside from text, I wanna see if Pretty Prompt can improve my prompts for images. I think this is very important because when you generate images, depending on which tool you are using, you could be consuming a lot of credits. So you wanna make sure that the prompt you are using to generate images or even video is actually good 
right off the gate. So this is my original prompt. I said, generate an image of Santa Claus using ChatGPT on his laptop. Now I'm gonna click on improve prompt. Okay, so uh, much longer, more detailed. So you are an expert visual artist and prompt engineer specializing in generative high quality, generating high quality imaginative images using advanced AI models. So the main task, the detailed image specification, this is the most important part. And then the style is also very important. And this is the core user input. Santa Claus using ChatGPT on his uh, laptop. So now we can uh, copy to the clipboard. Now I'm gonna be using a Nano Banana. So what I'm gonna do to test this is actually use the original prompt that I uh, generated myself here. Let me uh, copy and paste. Okay, let me submit. Okay, here we go. So it's actually, you know, not too bad, but let's try the improved prompt, okay? So I'm gonna go here, prompt history, and then go to improved prompt, and let's try this improved prompt out and see how it compares with the original image. Okay, here we go. So very good, let's compare these two. Honestly, I do like both images, but as you could see with the improved prompt image, it's much more detailed, right? You see in the background, all the candles. I think that looks nice. The original one did have a couple of candles in the corner, but you can't see them. It's mainly the Christmas lights. But one thing I really like is the detail of the Santa Claus and also the glowing screen uh, from Santa Claus's laptop. So here is a larger view of the image from the improved prompt. And this is the image from the original prompt that I created myself. Okay, so as you could see, it says model limit reached continuing with 2.5 flash. So I think this is the unique value proposition of Pretty Prompt is if you do get limited with the images you create, you wanna make sure that the prompts you are giving it have been improved or refined, right? So, so with Pretty Prompt, you can make sure you are using up your tool's AI credits more effectively and efficiently. Also, I really like the prompt library as well. So you can go in here and I did save the email clarity enhancer prompt. So I can apply the prompt. So this is an improved prompt that I could use to improve uh, my email campaigns, okay? So whenever you want to use a prompt that you really like, you can save it into your prompt library and then select it over here. Okay, now I clicked on refine prompt. And one thing I noticed is that whenever you improve a prompt and then go to refine prompt, you don't need to add the prompt here again. It uses what you added previously in the improve prompt section, I believe. And then it gives you these questions. So I think these both can go hand in hand, okay? So let's answer uh, these three questions. So desired artistic style. Let's do something different than the two photos that it generated for us already. So let's just do watercolor. And then what specific elements or details should be included? I would say maybe um, laptop. And then what is the intended mood? I would say magical and enchanting. Now let's click on submit answers. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna copy this. So let's see how this works. Okay, here we go. So actually it's pretty good. It's uh, not too bad. I think this ChatGPT area could be improved, but Santa Claus, the background, the detail is actually pretty good.